What do these two chisels have in common? Well, they're both made by Irwin. They're both about 12 inches long. And they're both dull as crap. So let's see what we can do about this. All of these brand new chisels are dull, but they're almost sharp. So there's nothing wrong with this chisel. There's just something you got to do to it to put it in service. This thing came out of your grandfather's or your uncle's toolbox. They're gone now. So let's look at what it takes to possibly drag one of these guys back into service because you've inherited it and it needs to live again so we can honor those men. Let's go down a rabbit hole and sharpen some stuff, shall we? This Tormac here, um, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. It's a piece of automation that you don't need unless you're in the production woodwork like I am. The factory angle on this chisel is about 25 degrees. A uh, little bit steep, but we are going to refresh to 25 because you have a lot more metal backing up the edge here. That's going to help. All right. We're going to attempt to take a photograph and show you guys that as you're looking at this blade edge on, it's actually silver. Those little silver spots that you're seeing on the edge are actual face metal, and we want to get rid of that. So what are we really actually doing here? Well, we have a 25-degree edge, okay? And I don't care if that's actually 25, but we're going to call it 25. What the heck, right? But is that really what we're doing? No, we're going to use this big stone, and we're going to scoop this out. I'm exaggerating it. So now we're going to have an edge that's hollow ground up to the top and out, all right? It is very important that you keep this backside flat. We have a few examples here of chisels that have been sharpened where the backsides were not flat. Very hard to show. Let me, let me get this end on. You can actually probably see right there. See how that rolls up on the back? Very difficult to control a chisel with that back angle. So we need to keep this flat. We need to keep the back side of this free of scratches. And we may actually have to polish this one a little bit in order to get the scratches out of it. Because that will show up in your cutting. Not only then do we have this hollow ground, but this is going to be the 25 degree angle. And then at the very, very end of this, and let me blow this up now. Here's the very end of it. All right. So this is like 10x view. That is going to be cut at about 27 degrees. So that's 25 degrees, right? And the reason we're going to do that is, is we're going to put about a 30 thousandths of an inch micro bevel on this. That micro bevel is going to be easier to touch up. It's going to be easier to maintain and easier to keep ridiculously sharp when you're on your workbench. I put a little bit of oil on this stone in order to float the particles of metal and, and bits of shards of stone that come off. That's what you put oil on it for. There are oil stones, there are water stones. This information is available all over the internet. This, again, is just chisels 101 for gunsmiths. All right, I have wire wheeled the back side of this and not the front, okay? We're going to leave all this on the front so we can watch this edge progress. But on the back, if you have pits, when you buy this thing or if you get it or you find it, if there are pits in this blade, if it's rusted bad enough, you're done. Take that chisel and make a mainspring for a gun out of it or something. Make a mainspring for a musket. What will happen is if you have discontinuities on the back of this and this run out from the grinder, you can actually see how the lines are going around like that. We're going to have to polish that out too because if you don't, you wind up with these microscopic fingers sticking out and when you make a cut you'll get you'll get lines through your woodwork again we wouldn't use a chisel this big for gunsmithing but the, the uh, woodworkers in the back asked me if i could say salvage this one and uh, they just work on a lot bigger stuff than we do so this stone is fairly flat and all i'm going to do is do a rub out on this and we're going to see how bad we are here all right we only need to get the last inch or so of it fairly, fairly shiny. And we can see here that um, right there, we're rubbing there, 
but we're not rubbing over here. So we've got to keep going. We have to get that shiny in the back. There are other ways to do this. You could take some 600 grit sandpaper and put it on something solid like a piece of silestone or something. So we're getting, we're making a little bit of headway there. You can see where we're touching off here. We're touching off there. And we just keep going until we get it absolutely flat. Do not lift the back of this chisel up. It will be impossible to cut a straight line unless you have a flat. And the chisel is typically used in this format, unless you're parting, you're, you're running it down across the wood that way, not across the wood this way. Again, there are a lot of woodworkers, a lot of cabinet makers that have done this video that are a lot better at it than I am. But I'm just talking to the new guys. Okay. <clears throat> going to get this we're going to work this over until there we go now we just about got it here let me get the light to shine on it again right there you can see that we've, we've got it all the way across it's like flat all the way back so this chisel was not in too bad a shape now leave all of this garbage on this um i leave it all on and then i take my personal my strop and we'll talk about strops here in a little bit later and I just take the garbage on the stone and throw it on my strop and use that to charge my strop. Okay. The front side of this, like I said, you leave that all on. I must. You just rub it on there like that. We'll talk about that here in a minute. So now you see we, we've, we've cleaned it off. Uh, where's the light? Where is, there it is. Right there. Boom. We've cleaned it off most of the way across the front here. And now we're ready to go to the other side. There is, however, one other thing we got to do. We'll set this thing up to 90 degrees. You don't have to have this fancy of, a, of an angle measuring device. I just happen to own it, so I use it. We'll set this up here to 90 and lock it down. And we're going to take a look at how true this angle is here. As you can see, I'm actually rocking across it. There, it's touching there, and it's you see what I mean? So it's not quite a true 90 degree angle, and in fact, yeah, this is kind of bad. There's a high spot right there, right where my fingernail is. There's a high spot. And you can actually see it rocking. Look at that. We're going to have to get rid of that. We have to cut this to a 90. For us, we will never be able to get a truly sharp edge on it. If you want to make a skew chisel, and there are chisels out there that have skewed edges, here's a couple of skews I happen to have in the shop here. These are actually designed for coming across and for slicing actions it's a different it's a different discussion for a different day but you know there you go we want ours to be in a 90 degree angle this brings us to our sharpening gizmo yeah buddy we're going to want to mount this thing in such a way that the edge is facing down and we're going to talk about what to do so in this jig here we have a uh, an edge here that we can lock that down and then we can lock this down and then on most sharpening jigs now this is my sharpening jig you do not need this sharpening jig in order to be a gunsmith um there there's an arrangement i've arrived at by the guys that actually own this thing that they don't know how to sharpen chisels and they don't know how to gunsmith and i don't know how to run cnc uh, cabinet making equipment so we got a little deal worked out where I sharpen their chisels and they make cool stuff for me. This is a fairly large Tormac sharpening stone and it's a wet stone. It rotates inside of a tank of water and you can see the water coming back around now. And what this water is going to do is keep the edge cool. In a little bit, we're going to talk about um, what we've already done in a recent video, which is hollow grinding screwdrivers where you're using your fingers to make sure that you're not getting the metal hot enough to crack it. So the way this jig works, you set the diameter of the stone here. And I know that this stone measures out at about 245 millimeters. So I've set 245 millimeters and then I know I want a 25 degree angle. So we're going to set this gauge to 25 degrees right there like that. All right. So 25 degrees. We have the we have the diameter of the stone so that we know that when we bring this up that has actually got to lay on and you can see here that it's not quite there yet we're just a little bit short so we need to shorten the stone up just a bit we'll come off we'll shorten up just a bit 
until we are we gotta come right there I'm looking at a little gap of light underneath it that this camera isn't going to pick up and then we'll tighten it up now I'm looking down the edge of this stone in such a way hang on a second here right where my thumb is there is a parallel line that's drawn between the edge of the chisel and the edge of the stone and that's how I'm getting a rough guesstimate as to whether or not if those two lines are parallel then I'm making the assumption then that this is going to cut at a 90 degree angle and since we know where that little dipsy doodle is it should start cutting off this side first so I'm tightening down here we'll light this thing up all right and I'm holding just a little bit of pressure on it and as you can see the water is welling up and is keeping the cutting action cool all right and if we come up we can see that we are beginning to cut here and I don't know if I got that reflect right there it is see that big silver spot that's where we're cutting so I'm gonna leave the light right here and I'm just gonna work around it so this is how out of whack this edge was and we'll bring it back somebody had made an attempt to sharpen it on a hand stone and I don't think they really quite understood what it was we were looking at now we're gonna move this over and back every now and then because we don't want to wear a groove in this stone okay the other thing we're looking at okay there you go see how we're coming over bigger now right there there it is this edge right here has got a bit of a rounded corner on it and that's got a bit of a rounded corner on it depends on the woodwork you're doing if you don't want the edges to go out I pers personally like them to go straight across I don't like that corner on it if they want that corner on it they can put it on it you just hold your finger on it right there and slide it back and forth now you can do this on a bench grinder with a real fine stone on it but you've got to keep it very cool don't get this edge hot enough that it'll hiss when you put it back in the water because if you're doing that microscopic cracks will start forming you'll draw the temper out on the edge and you will never get a blade on this thing now uh, how the heck are we going to show that there is a slight burr beginning to form here as we're taking off one side of it before the other but you can see how much of it as it's beginning to progress back across the blade wasn't exactly perfectly straight no big deal so this goes on ad infinitum ad nauseum and on and on and on And we're there okay so we've cut all the way across this is one now we can set up to do our micro bevel I'm gonna to try to slowly rock this water out of this thing and show you how much of the metal that we pulled out of this look at that all that right there is the wheel that came off but most of this is the metal that came off the chisel so this wheel did a fabulous job look at that all right so we know we did something what we just pulled out of this pan can also be manifested by hand doing screwdriver tips let's take a look at hollow grinding screwdrivers really quickly and then we'll pop back into the final prep but it's all the same thing just done with larger or smaller stones what i'm attempting to do here is get this 
the screwdriver end to be perpendicular to the long axis. So, not long axis, wrong words, but if you were to draw a line through this wheel, I would like the top of that to meet at about a 90 degree angle. Use your imagination here. So I've got the butt of the screwdriver sitting on the bench. And the beauty of this is, is you can set the perpendicularity of this rig. See what I'm saying right there on perpendicular and now I'm coming below it. You follow? And in order to track that, I'm going to sharpie down one of these blades. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about because we're really thick. I picked a very thick one to do this. This particular stone does not have to be rotated very quickly in order to get a lot of work done. And we do not want to heat this thing up to the point where we have to dunk this in a piece of water and listen to it hiss. Because if we do that, we're thermally stressing this tip and it'll get hot, get cold, get hot, get cold, it'll crack. And those of you that have been putting a lot of torque on a screwdriver, have a crack and hose up the outside of the uh, finish on a gun. Hmm. Don't do that, all right? So we're going to find the perpendicularity right there, and you can see it lays in it, all right? And then I want to make sure that I'm on the money this way also, because while that's perpendicular, that's wrong, okay? So we'll lay that up there, get that right, and then I can kind of take this thumb, set that down into the bench, and then I know where it's going to go. So let me see if I can get this right here. So now we can look and we can see that I was a little bit high there. So I need to slide the screwdriver up just a bit. And if I'm low, I'll get a mark on the bottom. I'll get a mark down here, okay? So we want to get right in the middle of that and make sure that we're on the money. Okay, I got this set and I'm going to put my thumb right there so I can feel how hot it's getting or not getting hot. And then you don't want to you don't want this thing to rotate too much there would be cutting one side of the blade that would be cutting the other you're looking for a completely perpendicular presentation all right so i'm still a little high but i'm getting there it's coming down you can see the sheens all the way across i can touch the blade and i got news for you man there's magnetic stuff being generated everywhere and it's landing on the bench and we don't want to drag that into the action so when we go to put the action together we'll do it over fresh towels rotate and come off on the other side now i just flipped that over and very nonchalantly put it up against the stone i will tell you that this is not the first time I've ever done this. And when I hold my thumb up in the air, it's not because everything's okay. It's because I'm trying to tell you I got a thumb in opposition to my four fingers. <laughs> yeah. While we were doing that, we were dragging microscopic amounts of material off such that if you were to run your finger along the edge, you can actually feel a very slight burr sticking up. And when you got that burr all the way across the edge, then you know you have come down to zero thickness. Now, on this particular stone, this is a water stone, so I'm just gonna get a little bit of water here and I'm gonna get it wet, all right? Now, there is, you see how this runs uphill right here? What I'm about to do, don't allow this edge to ride up on a stone. All we're gonna do is push straight down on this and like we did in the very beginning, all we're gonna do is we're gonna rub that burr off. That's all I'm doing now. I've gotten that burr off that backside and it doesn't curl up. Now, for the micro bevel, I've got to figure out how to show you this. If you put this thing down, and I'm going to put my finger here and show you what we're doing. There's a spot where it, boom, up, down. You see where it's coming up on the edge there? So it'll come up and it'll ride up, right? So I'm going to put it right until it touches. So now we got that 25 degree angle and I'm going to pick it up just a little bit. And I'm going to evenly just push. And that's going to start to draw a very fine line across this edge here. Let me give you that. Right there. See the silver on the top? That's your micro bevel edge right there. Very, very fine. You don't need much of it. Just push it down until it touches and then come up just a little bit. 
and I know there are guys out there with gauges that want to make this whole thing nice and shiny, but I'm talking to gunsmiths here because you got to get on with it, all right? There's a very, very fine edge there, and you can feel it, and it definitely curls up. Now, do not run your finger across this edge this way, okay? But there's a very, very fine curl there. We can come back in and push and take that off, and we're going to do that one more time. Again, being very, very careful to not lift this thing. Don't lift it. It's got to be absolutely flat. Okay, that's almost gone. We're going to do it one more time, and then we're going to strop. We're going to touch down, find it, come up just a little bit, and put a very, very fine edge on it. We've got it, and I'll get it right there in the light for you. You can see it's shining at us right on the edge. Where is it? Right there. So once we've done that, we're going to talk about a strop. So right now, we have an edge on this thing. Here's the curve. There's the micro bevel. And on the end of this micro bevel, we have a very fine wire edge sticking off. And it's just a very, very fine piece. And what we're going to do with this strop is we're going to sit here and we're going to strop it back and forth. And we're going to snap that piece off. And this thing will come up sharp as all get out. So one and then we're building a little bit of heat and we're pulling that edge off and once we do that this thing should stick to your fingernail and it's absolutely sticking to my fingernail here and the way to show that now is to come up on a, on a block of walnut here so I'm just going to touch this here and show you how far in that goes and I'm not hitting that very hard and that is cutting that is a truly ridiculously sharp chisel and I'm going to tell you one of the things that separates gunsmiths from non-gunsmiths is the ability to make a chisel ridiculously freaking sharp there you go and that's it and everything else is just go out now and go watch how the pros do it and they'll take these things down until they're absolutely silver this thing still has let me think let me get the light right here this thing still has some some edges on it but for what we are doing, we just cut a block of freaking walnut that is so sharp right there, and you saw how much effort it took. I mean, I can do this with my hand. I'll just, like that, bump in, and bump in. All right, there you go. That's chisels in a nutshell, and I think I'll leave all the schmutz on the back and they can clean this off by themselves. All right, so we're back. What do these two chisels have in common now? They're both Irwin. They're both about 12 inches long. One of these is still dull as crap. And the other one, yeah, baby, sharp, ridiculously sharp. And I'm thinking that we're going to be able to put these back in service again. I'll get all the rest of this stuff mocked off of here. But there you go. If you can use a file, make a flat spring, and make a chisel ridiculously sharp, you too can start screwing up and be a gunsmith someday. As always, guys. It's been a pleasure.